Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode number 20 of the Evolved Idiots Podcast. As always, my name is Mike Mendoza. Matthew Nathaniel. Hello, people of the Hello, planet Earth. Hello, people. What's up? <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, busy, you know? So staying busy. Staying busy. I got, uh... I got back from the East Coast on uh, on Monday. Flying was fucking weird. Had you a know? slight a slight hi- hiatus because uh, of the trip a slight little bit. Hi- yeah, 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 yeah. Slipped, slipped a few days. But uh, how was the trip? What was the experience like flying back home? Just um, or not home, but back know, to the East Coast. You know, yeah, you know, close. it was um, it was all right. You know, like would it would it be my choice to fly right now? Uh, yes, because it was my choice, but it was like <laughs> the experience was uh, not that great, you know. Like, yeah, like I know, like wearing a mask isn't a big deal and all that shit, but wearing a mask for for like eight hours kind of eats a bag of dicks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're in the airport, you're on the airline, and then you know, like you're wearing a mask for at least like eight hours. Imagine if you're an office worker or sitting in an office for eight hours yeah. on a computer wearing a mask. Yeah, well, that's why you know too. all you guys should be working from home from now. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean that's good for some businesses. Yeah. Some businesses, you know, not yeah. so much. But, but I, I flew Delta, which was cool because they uh, the middle seat they left vacant. So that's the way they socially <laughs> distance on the plane. I mean, they've got to do something. You certainly can't fill the rows. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would be kind of crazy. But it was weird because it was like the TSA bins, you know, like going through security and yeah. shit. They don't disinfect that s- stuff. I didn't see anyone disinfecting the TSA bins. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like TSA workers are assholes too. It's like, listen, man, like <laughs> relax. You know? Are they relax. assholes? They're, yeah, most of the time they're assholes. Yeah. You know? That's Interesting. why they work at the TSA, air, you know, <laughs> the airport. They're fucking... I thought they did it because they were they couldn't be cops. <laughs> exactly. They're asshole losers. <laughs> so <laughs> if we have any TSA listener fans, I'm just joking, guys. We love you. Only partially. Yeah, we love you. Only Com- partially joking. <laughs> comedy, comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how was it? I know you started working from an office more than working from home this uh these past couple of weeks right yeah i mean they've got us uh or at least for myself they've you know asked me to come in three days a week so yeah. i mean most of the time it's not too bad but one day a week i share a small office like small office yeah. And like under normal circumstances it would be not an issue i mean there's plenty of room but yeah you know, sitting in there in, in a, you know, 10 by 10 room or office with uh, another person with a closed door for, you know, a few, several hours a day is yeah. made me a little, a little leery, you know, yeah. especially oh. thinking about trying to go home at Christmas for the holidays and, yeah. and, you know, and then I heard Michael Osterholm talking about, you know, maybe this is the year when, you know, if you really care about your family, you know, maybe you shouldn't go home right you know if if your family's at high risk especially and so i I don't know how i feel about it like i was like man if i decide to go home for christmas i may ask to 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 not come into the office for like the previous two weeks Mm -hmm. and and just i I don't know though now i'm even questioning whether i should go home yeah i think for me it's you're always going to have that kind of anxiety about like like you don't want to be a, a spreader, right? You know, you don't yeah. want to spread the shit, but it's like, if you do all the right things, you know what I mean? Like before you go home, you just, you quarantine yourself kind of here. Yeah. You know what I mean? The only way you go out is, you know, on the airplane. And then like when you land in, in, you know, Tennessee, fucking quarantine for a couple, take the test when you get there, quarantine for a couple of days, like at a hotel and then be off yeah but none of that shit is none of it's guaranteed no. like i mean you know i quarantine for two weeks while I'm, i don't go to work for two weeks yeah. before i leave i've still gotta go to the grocery store mm-hmm. like you know uh, it's not a complete quarantine and uh also you know I, i'm in contact with people at the airport flying there mm-hmm. the tests are mostly accurate but as we've seen you know at the white house uh, in the last few weeks like even even being tested on a regular basis isn't 100 percent foolproof and so 
it just makes me nervous man most of my family is kind of at risk risk. and and you know they're either older my i stay with my grandmother usually she's a month before you send them vitamin d zinc you send them all this shit be like i want i want to come home for christmas to see you guys you guys need to take this shit you know what I mean? Like up their immune systems yeah. too. You know? I mean, I know we've talked about being more, uh, you know, willing to, to do things, you know, during this time and getting back to normal and so forth. But when it comes to this, like I'm a little bit more hesitant, Yeah. you know, because like I, I would never forgive myself if I was the one that made someone in my family sick and then they died from it. Well, I mean, you know, when it comes to the general public, kind of like, you know, cavalier about things like I'll wear them with a mask or whatever, but yeah. it's like when it comes to protecting the elderly, you know what I mean, from this disease, I'm all for that too, you know what yeah. I mean? So, But it's, man, it is interesting. Like, it's a weird time because it's like, you don't get this year back either. Like we're saying, like some of our family's getting older yeah. and it's like, what if this is the last year anyway? I also don't want to be the cause that it's yeah, the last yeah. year. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? But it's like, I don't know. I'd would, I would probably have a talk with, you know, family and like just be like, I cannot talk to my family about this. <laughs> They're all Trump supporters. <laughs> They're all just like, fuck it, come in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, I, I'm their <laughs> their opinion on this particular issue yeah. does not uh, factor as strongly into my considerations. What, what, what are the COVID uh, numbers in, in your hometown? You think? I I don't know. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if you like looked and you're like, I don't know. There's zero COVID <laughs> cases. That's, where you're that's from. definitely not true. I mean, <laughs> the South unfortunately has been pretty uh, liberal with their. The South, you know what's funny is the South is just such a, it's a trip, man. It's, it's, they're so like just steeped in their own like history and like the, 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 their, their, their ways that like even me traveling to the South, it, it's like, uh, <laughs> you have great Southern food, right? When you go down to the South, but it's like anything other than Southern food, they don't really fuck with it that much you know what i mean like no they tend to make fun of it yeah and you know mean meanwhile i probably have heard uh ten thousand times in my life that uh you know eating healthy is for suckers <laughs> <laughs> they'd rather die fat and happy than yeah. than than live a long time and that's what and john candy said garbage. back in the day yeah guess and what he's living all right <laughs> yeah i bet he is but that's the thing is like the South is too is too steeped in in conservative uh, religious conceptions. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's really what drives it. You know, like I, my only kid, like you've been in the South, me too. You know, like going to North Carolina, being pulled over by the cops over there, yeah. and like it's it's a weird. Sometimes it gives me a weird feeling. Like the only, you know, it's funny. The only city that I felt like comfortable with in like North Carolina, like going to North Carolina was like Charlotte, probably because it's a more, uh, it's the biggest city in North biggest, Carolina. Yeah, I mean, probably because it's the biggest city. It's more yeah. metro, it's more urban, it's more open-minded. Yeah. yeah. Hipsters down there and shit, but. I mean, again, it's just like everything else. The big city is a little more liberal and all the rural areas are yeah. more conservative. Yeah. That's where the good old boys will get you. Yeah. <laughs> Get ya. I mean, them country roads can be really beautiful, but uh, no. But people forget is like you know when we were in college in Florida, going home for the holidays, driving up ninety five. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) for me, you know what I mean? Like, like I knew I was like, all right, like all right, Florida's done. You know, Georgia's done. Got to get to South Carolina, North Carolina through southern virginia and then and then i was like i'm only safe once i get home to northern virginia you know what i mean like for that was my mentality i mean like <laughs> driving back in the day i made that trip so many times yeah. like yeah i mean there were i made that trip so many times i i knew keep key places to to be more careful yeah. than others but yeah, yeah generally speaking i, I never breathe the sigh of relief you know come at, come, driving up through there yeah. anywhere even i mean maybe north maybe northern virginia but 
Yeah. Most of Virginia still know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is the thing. I is, mean, like, uh, you know, when, when we talk about Virginia and stuff, and it's no disrespect to Southern Virginians, it's it's like there is a clear difference between Northern Virginians and the, the rest c- of it. It's the city influence. You know, like, we, the- we identify more with Washington, D.C. because yeah, that's our course. city. You know what I mean? Like... Then everything else in Virginia is pretty rural. Yeah, like I'm I'm even more city, DC than I'm Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, I mean you even know what Richmond I mean? and Charlottesville, these cities are small college towns, yeah. really. I mean yeah. they're not big cities, and they're they're kind of ugly. <laughs> uh, I mean they're little quaint Virginia towns. Yeah, you know that's about about what you could say about it. But but southern yeah. food is delicious. Yeah. But it's okay to not only eat biscuits and gravy. You know what I mean? Like, let's yeah. let's just expand our flavors a little let's talk bit. Talk about carbs, jeez. Yeah. Let me get some bread and put gravy grease, grease on it made with, with made sausage, with milk. You know, yeah. and sausages, grease and milk yeah. on top of these this bread and eat that and call it breakfast. Yeah, and it's like, was it's it good, delicious? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It'll kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, yeah. it's good every every once in a For while. Sure. Yeah, but. No man, it's we have a couple more weeks before the elections. Yeah, what's your what's your what's your take on uh, the whole? Uh, did you did you watch any or keep up with any of the proceedings for Amy Barrett? No, for the justice this week. No, I've been like since coming back from my trip. It's just been like uh, about like work, really. You know what I yeah. mean? Like trying to you know do all do do as much as we can to try to open back up fully. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so that's where my concentrate. Cause it's, it's weird. This I came back on Monday, but the week went by so fucking fast. Yeah. I've, I've, it's hard to keep track of everything, you know? Yeah. Let's get it. Like you forget, you, it throws you for a loop, especially traveling from East to West and losing hours like over there and coming back to, to normal over here. It's just like, dude, I was exhausted. A little bit of jet lag. Yeah, which is weird because it's like back in the day, like even fucking last year, I didn't notice no jet lag. But this this time I was like, damn, I'm fucking exhausted. It's a different kind of trip. It's a different type of trip. But, you know, like I haven't been able to keep up with the politics as much right now. But, you know, so I, I would, you know, we talk a, a lot about, you know, well, a decent amount about business and leadership and things like that. So the thing that caught my, you know, there's, there's several things, but one of the things that really caught me about her, her hearings, you know, basically this is her job interview, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, she comes to the front and Congress and the Senate or whoever, you know, all these elected officials get to ask her questions. So what bothers me is that in this interview process, one side is asking her questions like who does the laundry at your house and the other side uh would ask you know somewhat relevant questions like you know what are your opinions or beliefs on climate change or um do you think there should be a a, a smooth transition of power and these kind of questions women's rights to choose for roe versus wade and she didn't answer any of these questions. A little more relevant questions. Yeah, yeah, and so she would make a statement like, "Well, I can't speak without knowing specifics of a case to know how I would, you know, side on that." Which, you know, what if I show up to an interview, or you show up to a job interview, or anyone else shows up to a job interview, and we don't answer any of the questions that were asked in the interview, we're not going to get the fucking job. So, essentially. One side threw her soft pitches. The other side wanted to find out where she stood on certain policies and topics, right? Mm -hmm. And she didn't answer anything, correct? Yeah. So for me, that's just like, that is a career politician. That's what these, whatever, like, that's what politicians do. They avoid. But she's not a politician. She's supposed to be an impartial judge. And this is her interview for that job. Yeah. But we to, both me, know. to me, it shows that there is no interview and that qualifications don't matter. I mean, she's only been a judge at the level she's at now for the last three years. Mm-hmm. Before, I mean, she's not got the most experience in the whole world. Yeah. 
And then nobody brings up, you know, all this, uh, you know, with all these denials and refusing to answer, no one brings up the fact that she's a fucking religious fanatic, Mm -hmm. which is what they hammered her on, hammered her on in, I think, 2017, when they tried to bring her up to point to the courts then. And instead, they ended up going with Kavanaugh. But, you know, she's she's a member of some group called People of Praise. And this is one of those really conservative groups that believe that husbands have the right to put their wives sort of uh, in in certain roles and, you know, obedience and and this sort of thing. And really, you know, she's got like a shit ton of she's got like a shit ton of kids. She thinks it's a major accomplishment to reproduce, which I'm sorry, but pretty much anybody can reproduce. The organization was called what again? People of Praise. Oh, I heard it. I heard of that before. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a lot of cuckolds and uh, whores. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot I'll, of cuckolds I'll, and whores and people of praise. I'll just say it's a fucking cult. I mean, and then you know, here's the other interesting two, two a, few, a few other interesting things. First of all, this is like the grand scheme of of groups like the Federalist Society to mm-hmm. to stack the court in in a conservative fashion. So right now, if she goes through. Seven of the nine justices are going to be fucking Catholic. Mm -hmm. Seven of nine are going to be Catholic. That's more than 70%. But yet only 20% of the population are Catholic. Right. Agnostics and atheists in this country account for 26% of the population. Why are we allowing a specific religion to be the law of the land? That's essentially what we're doing. And I I don't understand this at all. Yeah, I mean, that's a very dangerous thing. Like, Like why why is there not a stipulation that, you know, you can have three three or four Christians on there. I would like to have a Buddhist. I'd like to have, you know... A, a more well-rounded. A more well-rounded. I'd like to have a couple agnostics, I mean, maybe the, an you atheist. Look at this, like, you look at this from my point. is like, I grew up Catholic. I considered myself like, I'm not super religious. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, I'd like, I believe in God. I believe in what I believe in, but... I identify as Catholic. My parents are re- quote unquote religious too. Sure. But but you're not like strict Catholics. Yeah. I mean, like it's like, you know? uh, I mean, most Catholics are not strict Catholics. Most Catholics, you know, still have marry uh, sex out of wedlock of and course. they still use contraception and they yeah. still, you know, they still do all these things that they're not yeah. supposed to do. That, that being said is like with seven Catholics, up for that right it's, it's very dangerous because it's it's i know like this is the beginning of like religious persecution well, I, I know this too it's like they're not for women's rights you they're know what definitely i mean not. Like, not, and i can say that you know what i mean it's like the other thing is the catholic church you know is like one of the biggest pedophile cults in in the world mm-hmm. why the fuck are we picking people to make our laws and determine the course of our nation for a lifetime appointment that belong to a cult that rapes kids. Well, here's my thing with that too, is, is there needs to be accountability with the Catholic church, right? Like, you know, when I go home, yeah, I go to church with my parents for like Christmas and shit, you know what I mean? And, you know, I do know priests, you know, growing up good priests though. Right. Mm. But it's like, when there's bad shit that happens and you try to sweep shit under the rug or don't address it or don't not only like that, not only like address it, but they should be pissed off. You know what I mean? Like being a Catholic growing up and then having like all these like pedophile things coming up. Right. It made me feel kind of ashamed, you know, like I don't understand why more Catholics don't hold the church accountable. That's what I'm saying. Is like it made me feel ashamed. Like I'm like, you are you want me not to eat meat during this time of Lent, but it's okay for this dude to fuck children, and yeah. you just reallocate them to a different parent. Yeah. You know what I mean? It 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 pissed me off because it's like, it's a black eye on something that's supposed to be good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like at essence, the Catholic Church, of course, like any religion, is good. There's good there. That's how you build your morality growing. You know what I mean? Like in this world, that's how I I have my different morals and beliefs and ethics that are rooted with the Catholic church. Right. But I also don't let them slide on this bullshit of, 
hide, hiding pedophiles, having uh, an obscene amount of money that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're the Catholic church, like how much fucking money does the Vatican have, man? They also are, are not, uh, don't have to adhere to any other country's law. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's a problem. Like, it's, you talk about secret societies. Mm hmm. Yeah. This is the definition of a secretive cult. But my thing is this too, is, is like, I can still be Catholic and be like, you guys, you guys are fucking up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you yeah. guys are fucking up bad. Yeah. Like it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't like when, when people think about church, it's, it's people think about a safe haven, a, a, a safe house for people to go to in times of need in times of, you know what I mean? Like not, you're going to get your fucking asshole ripped in half. You know what I mean? Like, and to me being a Catholic, it's fucking in, like, it was embarrassing. Yeah. Like the, like the people are like, Oh, Catholic, you guys are the, the little kid fuckers. I'm like, no, like, you know, a majority of us don't do that. But like, if the, if the, if the leadership yeah, that's is what doing I'm saying. it, then it doesn't matter what all the followers are doing. No, but it's like, like it's, th it's the Pope needs to like fucking bring all these people to justice, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like agree. fucking I kill all those demons. Cause they're not, if you, if you parade around as a holy man, but you're really the fucking devil, you know what I mean? That's the definition of the antichrist. You need, yeah, exactly. Pretty you, need, much. You, you need, you need to burn. You yeah, need to die. Yeah. So that's my, that's my uh, two cents on that. So kind of getting, getting back to the, to the court appointments, like, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the last few weeks about trying to uh, about packing the courts. Mm -hmm. So you under you know, familiar with this term, what it means. Yeah. yeah all that. So I'm, I'm curious like to know, and I want just to, touch on it real briefly here, like the, why everyone is talking about packing courts. So we've kind of already illustrated how the conservatives and Republicans have sort of packed the courts up to this point yeah. with nine justices. Mm -hmm. But what they're talking about now doing is expanding it to more justices, which to me, as much as I would love to see more balance on the court, it terrifies me because if the Democrats come in office here next year and add three more justices and appoint three, you know, liberals to the courts yeah. and the Republicans get power the next time. Like every time we switch administrations, we're going to end up packing the courts and then we're going to end up like Poland where this is exactly what Poland did, where they've now got over a hundred Supreme court justices in their country. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. So to me, this is a very bad idea. The thing I don't hear anybody talking about again is, term limits for these people. Yeah. Put them in there, let them stay for 18, 20 years, 15, 20 years, whatever. And then they get the fuck out of there. Yeah. I mean, they shouldn't be like, like we said before, it shouldn't be something that there's no term limits. And these people are just like in there until they're 80 years old. You I, mean, know what I mean, again, an 80 year old is too disconnected to be able to rule on something like Facebook or Twitter yeah. anyway. You I'm, need to have. I feel like I'm old, too old to, I and mean, I'm disconnected from like. I mean, all it's the hard to keep up with. Right now. It, yeah. It's hard to keep up with. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a problem. I, I saw from Robert Reich this week that uh, since 1969, Democratic presidents have appointed four justices. In that same amount of time, Republicans have appointed 15. Four of them were by presidents who lost the popular vote. That is not democracy. Yeah. That is a rigged system designed to screw the people and keep the power again for, because really I know we're talking about all these social issues when it comes to the courts, but mm -hmm. what no one's really even talking about is the fact that this is really a, about corporate welfare. Yeah. This is really about the decisions that they're going to decide when it comes to corporate uh, r rulings. The corporate overlords. Yeah. I mean, this this is what <laughs> it's really about. And I, I don't know. It's 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 really frustrating that that you don't hear anybody talking about this more. Yeah. Um, but 
it is what it is, I guess, because it doesn't look like there's anything that they can do to, to stop, stop it at this it, yeah. point. Uh, I, you know, they just don't have the votes. And, and the people's concentration are just on the presidential elections right now, really. It is that and the stimulus. I mean, the stimulus has been in the news. Um, It'll be you know, after the elections, Trump, bro. Trump, of course, proposed <laughs> a, after... a $1.6 trillion uh, <laughs> stimulus package. Pelosi wanted two point four. It's really only $800,000. It's not that far off. Yeah. I mean, it's far enough, but I think the one point six would still give people like four hundred bucks toward the you know instead of the six hundred that they had previously. You know, it does some things. And meanwhile, you've got Pelosi. And did you see her interview with Wolf Blitzer this week? No. Oh my God, dude! You you we I, we're gonna I'm gonna show you this because it's it's too it's almost too much. Like she so she is a such a, a piece like she is Marie Antoinette and I would not be sad if somebody drags her out of her house one day and and just eviscerates her on <laughs> the front lawn because she's completely sold everybody out. It's 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 terrible. So <laughs> let's play this. with no knowledge of the difference between our two bills, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that to you in person. Right, Madam Speaker, these are, these are incredibly difficult times right now, uh, and we'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much yeah. for joining no, we'll us. We'll leave it on the vote that you are not right on this, Wolf, and I hate to say that to All you, right. but I feel confident about it, and I feel confident about my colleagues, and I feel confidence in my chairs. And it's not about me. It's about millions of Americans who can't put food on the table, who can't pay the rent, and we represent them. And we represent them. Getting and by we represent these them. long food and lines we represent that we're seeing. Them. I know we you know are. Them. I'm, I'm just we saying. We represent them and we know them. As we, we say. We know them. We represent them. Don't let yes. the perfect be the enemy of the good, as they say It is here nowhere in near perfect. Madam Speaker. It's always the case, but we're not even close to the good. All right. Let's see what happens, because every day is critically, critically important. Thanks so much Thank for joining us. Thank you for your us. sensitivity to our constituents' needs. I am sensitive to them, because I see them on the street begging for food begging for money. Madam Speaker, thank you, you so much. Have you fed them? We feed them. We we'll, feed them. We'll continue this conversation down the road for sure. I mean, she's she, only worried about her image. She is That's so it. disconnected. Yeah. She it's it's unbelievable like that she is allowed. And you know, this goes to show too, like she gets on these she's used it's obvious that she's used to going on these shows and she's used to getting these softball pitches. Yeah. And that's what she's used to having to handle. And I mean, he didn't ask her a very complicated question. It's like, why are we not doing the 1.6? We got people fucking losing their homes. Trump yeah. moved forward this week with allowing evictions to start taking place, even though the eviction ban is in place. Like you've got people that need assistance yeah. that aren't being allowed to work. Mm -hmm. And she would rather literally let it all burn down instead of letting Trump, so what if Trump gets online and he goes, oh, I did this, let him fucking take credit yeah. for it. There's only two weeks left in the election. One third of the electorate has already voted in early voting. Yeah. I mean, I mean do the, your job. But see, like, we know, we know these people don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know, Nate, like, what, 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 what sucks is when I see, like, people who put their hope in those type of people. In, in Nancy. In, in Nancy Pelosi. Like, wow, and then, what a great and then, woman. And no, then, no, and then no, did sorry. you see where, like, this all started, even before this, there was an interview with Andrew Yang where he called her Nancy instead of Speaker Pelosi. And he got ridiculed for, like, being disrespectful to a woman in charge. Like, By the, the woke, woke army? Yeah, the yeah. woke shit has got, like, who can, def can we find a way to defund the woke army? Yeah. Like, you, let's defund them. What you got to do is start with uh, uh, burning all the quinoa. <laughs> 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 and then they'll, they'll, just, uh, they'll just all suffer. But yeah. no, but we've, we've known, like, we have know these, these people, these career politicians like Nancy Pelosi. They don't give a fuck about the, 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 the real people. And it sucks. It's like when I see people in these poor communities that, that, that put the hope in. With and these them. people, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. people are like, like, I'm seeing it right now. People are like, get ready, Biden and Harris, right? These people are not going to change shit. No. You know what I mean? Like, But it's going to be better than what we it's have. It's better than the alternative. Currently. But it's like, nothing is going to change. 
You know what I mean? Not much. You you know, you asked me earlier about if I thought Trump was going to win. So just as a, as a number here to consider going into this election, there are more people that have filed for unemployment this year than voted for Trump in 2016. Mm -hmm. That's not good for that's not good for a reelection bid. No, that's <laughs> just not good. Um, you know, and then and then I saw where the Democrats another terrible fucking idea. Um, they introduced a bill to determine the fitness of a president. Did you hear about this? No. So they want to create a panel. If this bill passes, it would create a panel made of physicians, psychiatrists, and former presidents and cabinet secretaries that would be selected by the leadership in Congress to determine the if a president is fit to be if a person is pre fit to be president. No. Like this is a f really terrible yeah, idea. No, that's more obstacles for someone who really wants to make a change it like in like make this country like really make a change it make it's creating more obstacles and it's going to keep the career politicians in those offices you know what i mean it definitely keeps them in office it also further in my opinion erodes away you know what we have as far as you know a democracy like we're just giving more power to congress who clearly doesn't do anything yeah. except enrich themselves um, it, it, again, Take it's, a it's a, it, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. It's a problem. They These people care. go into office, uh, as you know, you know, upper, upper middle class to upper class, but they come out, you know, once they're in office for more than a decade, they're all fucking millionaires yeah. and you know, they only make what, 150,000 a year for salary. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, where, where are they getting this extra money from? From the corporate overlords, bro. And then there's like, there's shit like this where like, you know, you see and you're like, well, how can people, you know, what's the other side of it? So you got the woke army on one side and then on the other side, you've got these kind of idiots. I think mail-in ballots is not going to be fair because it leads to fraud and stuff. You don't, you don't trust mail-in ballots? Not at all. The president uses mail-in ballots. Yeah, the, for, they're going to use mail-in ballots for this upcoming election, right? <laughs> right. But the president himself uses mail-in ballots. Oh, he does? Where? He, that's how he votes. He mails it in. That's different. That's, yeah, that's different. I don't, How's it different? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I honestly didn't know that. I don't even know what you're talking about. But you do know it's different. After hours in the heavily contaminated parking lot, <laughs> I wanted to self-quarantine and chill. But I still had one burning question. Are you in a better place than you were four years ago? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is I'm, America in a better place than they were four years I ago? I believe absolutely. We now, have higher now, unemployment, we have 200,000 people dead due to COVID, and we have riots in the streets. Yes, let me just tell you this much. Yes, I'm doing much better. I'm literally making four times as much as I was making when Obama was president. What do you do? I work for a debt relief company. <laughs> yeah. And, and, <laughs> so now as a debt relief company, exactly. you make more money under Donald Trump. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. It's good to be a... Imagine that. And, and to me, this just shows like the problem where people are not, they simply don't, they're looking at it through the eyes of, of themselves, through selfishness. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm making more under Trump. Well... So what? But it's also like and the rest. Everything around you is burning down. You people are just. It's basically sports teams, right? You got Trump and, and Biden. It is at but this like point. The people forget that these people are supposed to be working for the people. You know what I mean? Like, man, nothing like supposed to be. Yeah, supposed to be. But that's why it's like we we are where we're at because the masses are just fucking. They'll they'll keep eating the plates of shit that these people keep giving them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, like I really believe this. We're all eating fucking dried out bread and they're all eating sweet, moist cake. Well, Nancy Pelosi has uh, chocolate ice cream, chocolate, different flavors of in yeah. stocked freezer. Yeah. Stupid cunt. So on a more positive, <laughs> so two positives and a negative. Okay. So we're going to swing back toward the positive side right, here a little right. bit. <laughs> so we've talked about ranked choice voting previously yes, yeah, as a yeah. way to kind of level this out and make voting more equitable. Mm -hmm. So it's actually going to be on the ballot uh, to for future to be a way that they vote in the future in Massachusetts and Alaska. What, what when are the? So it's on the November ballot. So oh, if, okay. it, if it's approved, then moving forward, they will have ranked choice ballots in those in those states. Nice. Conversely, on the negative side, this week. Our lovely, lovely governor, Gavin Newsom, uh, decided that he would not allow 
ranked choice voting to be put on the ballot to be voted on by the people in the state of California. Because they want them out? <laughs> uh, it's because it would be a shot to the to the power. Yeah. Uh, it would be it would be more difficult for people like him and Pelosi to be reelected if there was ranked choice voting. And right now, Pelosi's actually in a, f I don't know how close the, that election is going to be, but she's being challenged by a pretty significant uh, opponent up there in San Francisco yeah. right now. I mean, if she could get unseated, like that would be a tremendous win for the people. Yeah. All I can say is this, like living in California right now, majority, like everybody's dissatisfied. You know what I mean? Pretty like, much. Everybody. Doesn't unless, matter unless you're wealthy. Yeah. Unless you're wealthy. Unless but you're wealthy. It doesn't matter whether you're left or right here in California. Everyone's dissatisfied right now. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, in, in corruption uh, this, this week, I saw where New York City spent 250. So here we talk about police. And when we, again, we've talked about defunding. I made a crack a minute ago about defunding the woke army. But this is really fundamentally part of the problem with, with the police. So New York City Police Department is one of the most powerful police unions in, this, in the country. But uh, last week, they spent $250 million settling police misconduct lawsuits from the last five years. Simultaneously, because they paid this, they had to cancel a $900 million payout that was owed to the teachers in the state. Wow. So, fuck education. Yeah. Let's let the corrupt cops keep doing their thing. The police union, for sure, <laughs> I mean, has has you know what I mean, is a strong hand. Obviously, they run they run the the government in in the state of California or, or New, York. New York. It yeah, seems. for sure. Seems I mean, that way. That's a strong yeah police union up there, strong as fuck. And then we talk about uh, you know these uh, therapeutics that are being developed for COVID, and the treatments are getting better. But what nobody's pointed out is that, yes, Chris Christie is is obese. Donald Trump is probably obese. He's obese, yeah. And they've both kicked this relatively, you know, within a week or so. But as uh, I think Bernie Sanders, I saw pointed out, the medical care that they got this for their treatments would have cost anybody else well over $100,000. Mm -hmm. And they got it for free. And some of the treatments that they got aren't even available to the general public. Yeah. Then you've got a company like big pharma company Gilead, which is charging $3,000 for a coronavirus drug that only costs $10 to produce. Woo. Yep. When you talk about not having a heart and not giving a fuck and putting profits over people's lives, yeah. that is a prime example. That is another company. Uh, to me, companies that do this, this is no different than than the Martin Shkreli dude. Yeah. Like, lock these motherfuckers yeah. up. I mean, that's why he went to jail, correct? Yes, he's still yeah. in jail. And we still don't have that uh, Wu-Tang. We haven't heard that Wu-Tang oh, album. No. That he <laughs> I would like to hear the Wu-Tang yeah. album with that dude. fucking bought. weird scumbag. But no, like that should, it should for sure be illegal. But why isn't it? Because they're in bed with all the career politicians. It's, it's crazy. 3000 bucks. It costs $10 to make career politicians, bro. That's why, well, that's why these guys go the to politicians. They're the ones that pay the lobbyists. Yeah. The lobbyists go pay the politicians yeah. and the lobbyist is just the middleman. Yeah, it's it, like a drug deal yeah. is all it is. And the lobbyist is, Literally the, is, the, deal. is the transporter. Yeah. He's, he takes the drugs over here and he takes the money back this way. And mm -hmm. it's just, you, it's, it's all well, it that's, is. That answers your question earlier, right? These people, they make six figures and then they leave all multimillionaires. That's why. That's why. They're all fucking greased up, greased yeah. up fucks. Now, you remember a while back, we, well, not a while back, we've pretty much been, been beating up on Garcetti all summer, right? Yeah. And we, to my knowledge, nobody's really happy with him. But this is a great example of where you do a shit job, nobody wants you to stay in office, and you get fucking promoted. This dude is being mentioned, if Biden wins, that he would be appointed the transportation secretary for the f whole nation. 
Now, does LA have such amazing transportation <laughs> systems set up that it should be that th that Garcetti should be like put in charge of the whole nation? Like we've got an Olympics coming up here in what eight eight years? Yeah, I think so. And huh? there's not anything been improved around here yeah. transportation wise. Oh no, LA's so shit. what qualifies him to be transportation secretary? It's just a good example of you, you have the right friends in networking. the right places, yeah. network. It networking. doesn't matter how good or shitty of a job you do yeah. in politics. Network. That's all it is, yeah. You got the look of a politics. why I kept saying all summer, like, I think him and Newsom, like, they've got higher aspirations, and they'll probably move on and get promoted out of California. Oh, for sure. I think you should run for office. You kind of look like a politician. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Me, no way. That'd I mean, like I go to wild. some of these, even at the local level, I go, you know, you watch these council meetings yeah. and it's just like, literally, I don't know why anybody, there's only two reasons why someone would want to be a politician. Yeah. One, you've got nefarious reasons. You're, you're greedy. You want to self enrich or you love power or two, you really, 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 really do love people and and in your community and you want to make it better because what, it is a terrible what have job. you seen more of though dealing with city councils and government like local governments <sighs> it's hard to tell with a lot of them yeah. it, it's just tough to tell it, it really is but there are definitely a lot of people that are nefarious. Look, there's a lot of people who are in government that could never run a, a business because it would fail. It would fail, yeah. 100%. I mean, you look at any government They're not forward-thinking. They're not <laughs> innovative. They're not creative in what they present. Yeah. They don't move quickly. They're not decisive. They're not passionate. It's and just like, a you look bad at situation. Any, any government-run, build it, every, any, like, it's the worst-run things ever. Look at the, all the government websites. Looks like it was fucking made on, you know, in the fucking 90s. <laughs> Yeah. usajobs.gov bro they're pretty <laughs> they're, gross. They're, they're pretty bad yeah. they're pretty bad indeed yeah yeah and you see the 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 woke army came for uh bill burr this this week no yeah he had uh what they do what he do what he do he had a monologue on snl because he hosted snl and he was like this shit talking like well, he always shit. How, that's his skit. That's his yeah, shit, you know? He was like how, how white women are trying to take the steam from like my, minorities and shit. And like uh, how the, uh, uh, what was it? Where, where did people really get offended? It was. I mean, his style of comedy, like you just have to accept well, it's that very he's. very blunt. He, he, it's blunt. It's direct. And he's, he's like the grumpy, oh, grumpy guy. Like, oh, that's, he was that's saying, his, he's saying, why, why should Pride Month be all of June, right? He's like, they were never, they were never enslaved. He's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, black people were actually enslaved and they only got February. Which is a short month. <laughs> it's a short month, <laughs> which is it's hilarious. True. It, but it's, it's true. It's true. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. And it's smart. And you should like so so the so uh, the gay pride side was woke of the woke army was shitting on him yeah yeah they're coming for him yeah, well. but it's like but this is my thing is like when you when people start to get offended by comedians that is when you need to like <laughs> like comedians jobs are to a make you laugh make you think and just to have a good time yeah they're not meant to be like. Oh no, that hurts my ears. It's bleeding now. Like, oh, relax. It's a, his job is to be provocative and to be a it comedian. Is. He's, a, he's a comedian. And guess what? If you don't like his his style, go listen to another comedian. Yeah, it's that simple. There's yeah. thousands of them. A lot, you know. Maybe you just don't like. Maybe you're not a, a funny a person who finds humor in exactly. things in general. You know exactly. that maybe you shouldn't be listening to comedy to begin with. Yeah, no. I mean, people need to learn how to really give and take criticism more effectively. Like, I feel like that's a skill set. Like, even in the workplace, like, it's a difficult thing that I think people struggle with. I just think it's, it's people are so overly sensitive now. Like, it's crazy. So, it's, how, so how do you deal with the oversensitivity, like, when it comes to... You know, like if you're, you know, and you're, you're in a slightly different work environment, so I don't want to say want to equate it back to the academy, but in general, like in this sensitive society or state that we're sort of in, 
how do you know you critique someone or um you know what's what's your thoughts on the best way to accept critiques i guess both you know how, yeah. how what's the best way to give them in this environment and what's the you know how should someone receiving them accept them if they if they're one of those sensitive individuals like what should their thought process be about for me that? If, I'm, if i'm giving someone like critiques i always do it with like it depends on what it is but it, i always will inject a little empathy in there yeah you know be like hey listen i get where you're coming from you know what i mean like i get your side of things um but this is uh my like this is why i think this way should be done. You know what I mean? Like, right. be like, listen, I get, I got, I got what you're, I get where you're coming from, but let me explain this. So it's always like, I'm not stomping them out right away. You know what I mean? I'm not like, you're fucking wrong. You're wrong. Right. Cause that's not going to get you anywhere. Right. Like you have to, now you kind of have to be a wordsmith really to, to kind of explain things or critique some, somebody without like them getting butt hurt. You know what I mean? So it's, because so many people are sensitive and then me taking critiques, I could take it all day. Cause it's like, I look at it from, from the aspect of an athlete. If you're critiquing me, it's for the betterment of myself. Right. All right, let's, let's try to get this done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I understand it better because of being an athlete all my life. I think you, know? you and I are on kind of a similar page here when it comes to when we get critiqued, mm -hmm. you know, because I think we both got pretty thick skin and, mm -hmm. And, and don't get me and, wrong. And there's times that I'm like, oh man, it kind of hurt, but I, yeah. I understand it. Why? It's, it's, yeah. the, it's the understanding of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when people shut off because they're like, oh no, you're offending me or like this hurts too much and you're, I'm feeling attacked. Right. All those, like, look at all those words I just used. That's a bunch of victim vocabulary. Yeah. But that's the world we live in now is when everybody is a victim, like, <laughs> I'm a minority. I'm a victim. I'm a white woman. I'm a victim. I'm a white male. I'm a victim. You know what I mean? Like when everyone is using victim vocabulary, that's when things go downhill because you, you're going to think you are the victim. And when you start thinking you're the victim, you're going to have this like despair about you. And like the world doesn't understand and no one, no one fucking gets me because I'm unique yeah. and all this shit. Like fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I would, I would say from, from my perspective, like if, if I'm giving a critique, you know, to someone who's sensitive, I think you're right. You have to be very thoughtful about how you present the critique. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think it goes back to something we've talked about many times before. And, you know, if, especially if you're in a, a leadership role over somebody you're, you're critiquing, um, but it could be a teammate too, uh, an equal. Mm -hmm. And I think it also comes back to the, the initial steps of having someone understand what the main mission or, or goal is, having them buy into that, to that vision. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think by doing that, it's kind of a preemptive way of hopefully avoiding the sharp criticisms. And instead, it can be just a little tweak, you know, yeah. you know. And then as far as really, I think when if you're someone who who doesn't take criticism well again coming back to something we've touched on many times is destroy your ego let yeah. the ego go because and and because once you realize let your ego kind of dissipate a bit and and checks and you check it i think it really allows you to be um I think it allows you to have more separation of emotions from the conversation. You can, mm -hmm. you can remove the emotional aspect out of yeah, it and, look at the facts. and you look at the facts and you're like, you know, maybe I didn't love the way that his tone, but you know yeah. what, what he said was, True. was right. Yeah. I get it. I see, I see it. It makes sense. It's logical. Check. I got this I'll, and, and move forward. If you just take the emotions out of it, I think it, it, it really changes the dynamics of how you can communicate with someone. But that's the thing I think I, I would say that people nowadays in the climate we're in are overly emotional. <laughs> For sure. You know what I mean? Like their emotions are behind everything they do instead of like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
Well, oftentimes you hear people say, well, I feel this or I yeah. feel that. And they refer it to something that, as if though it's a fact. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? Feelings are not facts. Mm -hmm. They're just feelings. feelings. Yeah. They're they very ambiguous. Yeah. They change constantly. And that really leads into being, you know, you got to be adaptable. Well, I think that especially the youth nowadays, I don't think they understand emotions too well. Their coping mechanisms are different, right? Like from where we grew up, you know what I mean? Like from where we grew up a little bit, it's just like, uh, I think we come from coping the same mechanisms. Is that what we're talking about? Cope, like, well, coping mechanisms in terms of like, if someone's like critiquing me, yeah, I'll just be, I'll take it. You know what I mean? Sure. But some people will all, like, I'll take it and I'll listen. Right. They're, they're, they're going to shut off after you attack their, like after they get emotional. Some people are like, if you're critiquing them halfway through the critique, they're going to shut off stop because listening. they stop listening because you, it hurts too much. Yeah. And I think that's due to, these are what these people have been conditioned to do. They're the generation that all of them got our participation award. Everything was baby proof for them. It's, it's harder to critique someone that's been protected for so, you know what I mean? Like for so long, instead of like my gen, like you skinned your fucking knee, throw some dirt and I keep walking. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I take that same kind of philosophy in like in the office or whatever. It's like, I'll baby you a little bit because that's what you need right now, but you're going to need to learn to have a thicker skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, ultimately if I'm leading a team and I have higher fire powers, uh, somebody that's, uh, I deem as a weak link Yeah, could be for many reasons. It could be that they're too emotional. Yeah. Eventually they're going to not be on the team. Yeah. That, that's that's how I see it. I mean, like, and I struggle, I do struggle with this because, you know, I think for me, when you said coping mechanisms, I'm like, yeah, I'm one of these, let's compartmentalize it and bury it deep down inside, <laughs> kind of, you know, fuck it and just move on kind yeah. of attitude. You're like, this will come up in a month when I start crying. <laughs> I don't cry. Shower for no reason. I don't cry. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it's like even right now, like we're putting in. So um, we've implemented a, a, a workforce development program at, at work for all of our, um, you know, b regular employees, basically. Um, and so we're running it through a college and the college is uh, points an instructor. The instructor, you know, is right now they're teaching it on online through Zoom. And, you know, the department heads, when I was, you know, getting their feedback on what they wanted to cover topically and so forth, um, you know, one of the things that they wanted, they were like, well, you know, the first time we ran it, the classes were three hours long and we had breaks, but it was a three hour once a week class mm -hmm. for seven weeks. To me, we're providing you with a free education for people who most of them haven't went to college at all. Right. If this is somebody that wants to move up into management, this doesn't seem like that big of a sacrifice to ask them to show up for three hours once a week. Of course not. To, to get this experience and this learn this these new skills. Yeah, to but put that on the resume. But the department know? heads were like, well, you know, today's these guys, these kids, they just uh, they don't have the attention span to be able to sit there. Can we make the classes like 45 minutes or an hour? And I was like, no. Yeah. No, we can't. And there are some other reasons why we can't, but fundamentally, no, we can't. So I, I, I negotiated and we came down to an hour and a half, or well, it's two hours actually with uh, 30 minutes of lab time, so qu open question sessions. Okay. But to me, it's like, you know what, if you can't show up for two hours once a week mm -hmm. and you think, and you keep telling people, I want to move up in the company, I want to better myself, I want to better myself yeah. and you're not willing to do that, yeah. then you're not fucking leadership management material. No. And stop wasting my time. I don't even want you to take the class if yeah. you can't, if you uh, to take be, it to fill up a spot for somebody who really does want it. Yeah. To be honest, I think it's, it's that the attack on masculinity over the past decade, right? Of like, where are you going with this? I'm going, this is, is, <laughs> What's is, that got to do with what I just said? Well, we, we, like everyone's become softer, right? So it's like this, like they can't handle three hours. Let's make it 45 minutes. When your mentality was like this, you want to move up in the world, 
You go sit there for three hours, one time a week. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not that but, much. But that's a man shit, though. That's a very, like, man, like, get the fucking work done, move up, get better. I don't even want to say it's manly it. or masculine. I just think it's, like, disciplined. It's a mentality. I think, you know, feminists and women can ha absolutely have this. I don't want to attribute this just to men, but uh, I, I do. It, yeah, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's just like not that much. Like, are you dedicated? Do you really want it? Well, How bad do you want it? Because you know what? I had somebody at a previous job that was, so I was, when I, when I moved to Washington state and I took the job up there, Yeah. Um, there was somebody that was already working with the company that had been, that was there and they had wanted the job that I got hired for. And this person uh, over time wanted to be my number two and I, I needed somebody a right hand. And so I was looking for someone to kind of promote from the overall team mm -hmm. to this role. And this person, like, you know, we kept track of everything, you know, as far as production numbers and how efficient, how fast you worked and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I also paid attention to like, are you somebody that does it the way, the best way to do it? Or do you look to take shortcuts? Yeah. And this person never hit production. They weren't one of the top producers. They did look for shortcuts. And it was like they felt like because they had been there, they deserved it. We didn't, we didn't end up promoting this person. In fact, we ended up letting the person go. Because that dude. Down the road. That person is a pussy. That's why. Well, it's just this thing of entitlement. You know, it's like, I deserve it. Well, why do you deserve it? Because you've showed up here every day for a longer period of time. Well, we just hired so-and-so, you know, two months ago, and he's like crushing your numbers. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I want to go, I want to have a team full of go-getters. I don't care how long you've been with me. Mm -hmm. I want a team that's responsible, that knows the vision, that I don't have to sit and micromanage. Like this entitlement mentality is just, it's, it's, it's killing society. It's killing business. It's killing culture. Yeah, but because nothing is earned anymore. Well, Everyone's and, given. Well, and now you've got even more people. It's like I, I had a meeting with, a, with, with somebody else uh, in the past few weeks. Um, and we were talking about, you know, education, cannabis education in the community, um, you know, and, and they run um, a publication that speaks directly to the Spanish community. Okay. And so we looked at it like a win-win, like this is something they're going to get some, some great uh, material out of it because they wanted to, to educate their, their demographic, their constituents, their readers. And for us, it's a way that we can kind of get our name into the community in a positive way by doing yeah. something that needs to be done yeah. and, and not, not as a way to market the company necessarily because we're not talking about the company. We're talking about, you know, impacts of the it coming in yeah. and the actual education of it. But in this conversation about educating the community, she's, she, they're like, so we would like to be your business partner in the community. It's like they want to be. So they want their they hands want, they in the want, pot they, now. They want 50% of a business because they meet certain check boxes. So what you're saying is now they're greedy little pigs. Well, again, it's, it's just like another example. It's like that entitlement. It's like you literally know nothing about our industry. Yeah. And you think because you or have a certain background, you know, heritage yeah. or gender yeah. that you should just be given this. Yeah. I've been in this industry for a decade and I, I don't get to be half owner in any of our, our, our businesses, yeah. our stores. Like, come on. Yeah. I mean, this, they don't have that old school work ethic you know what I mean? Mentality like opportunists. Th yeah. This is my thing is like, you know, when people think old school and there's like a negative connotation with that, right? People are like, that's just the old ways of thinking. Like there's a lot of good old school shit. You know what I mean? There's like, some good old school shit. There are things that are timeless lessons. Yeah. And that like, to me, it's like we touched before of, um, you know, when I was a trainer in Chicago, right? Dude, I fucking, the reason I was able to do so much shit was because of my work ethic. Like I'm going to outwork everybody in the room 
And that's why I was able to get salary and all that shit is because, yeah, my work ethic, my old school work ethic got me in a better position. You know what I mean? Not like these fucking other other people that are like, I'm going to Tulum uh, in a month and I'm going to go to Spain and I'm taking all these Instagram pictures. And then I'm like, bitch, you're still going to come back here and be unhappy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. work ethic, old school work ethic. I think watching my dad, you know, have that work ethic too growing up. Like uh, there was a time where, you know, we moved to New York. We were living in my aunt's basement and my dad couldn't find a job up there. Right. So he finally found a job in Washington, DC, but they didn't want to pull me and my sister out of school in New York. So my dad rented a, a fucking little room in DC and every weekend he would drive up to New York to spend time with the family, drive back down every Sunday night, go to work. And then he would, he did that for, I would say a year. You know what I mean? Just cause like, but I saw that growing up and I'm just like, damn man, like, See, that's the kind of shit that makes me like, really? You can't sit here for two hours? But that's what I'm like, saying is fuck like, off. my dad, you know, like came to this country and made something of himself. You know what I mean? Part of the Navy, did all these things. And my dad outworked everybody. So yeah. he, he started looking at it like, I look at it like this very fondly because it's like, we were living in my aunt's basement in New York. He moved us down finally after a year, a year and a half we got into a, a, a townhouse and then after the townhouse, I was in high school and I saw my dad bought a single family house when we got to high school. So it's like constant improvement, a constant steady. improvement from renting a room, yep. not being with your family. You know what I mean? To moving your family down to a townhouse that you own, like you owned it. And then finally, when me and my sister were in high school, but we finally got to know what it was like to live in a single family house. Yeah. But I saw my dad, my dad and my mom's hard work pay off is like that work ethic and that, that family matters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. loved his family so much. Yeah, I'm going to travel there every fucking weekend to make the drive. Cause that's, that's what we got to do now. I mean, my, my, my very similar to, to, to my, to my dad, different circumstances, obviously, yeah. but you know, my dad, you know, didn't go to college, but he has worked every, I mean, up until the last year or so, like every single day, like I can remember most of my childhood, he worked six, seven days a week. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, and we went from, you know, living in the countryside in a single wide, you know, and sharing a room with my brother to like, eventually by the time I was almost a teenager, you know, we moved into the city into a house yeah. and, and, you know, it was, and you yeah, remember these things as a kid. And, and, yeah. I, and, and, you know, watching him make that sacrifice every day to go and do it. Yeah. You know, is, was, it's, it's, it stayed with me yeah. again. It it's ingrained added, in your DNA. It added to that impression and, and really, made, and, you know, deepened that impression yeah. in, in me. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, but those are great lessons. You know what I mean? Old school well, everybody lessons. Everybody wants to be, they, they want to hit it tomorrow. They yeah. want to change everything tomorrow. They want to go from, you know, living in a, in a dump to living in the West, in the Hollywood Hills, you know, next week. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's, it's like a lot of successful people talk about staying on the grind. Yeah. It's a grind. It's never over. Yeah. And one thing I could say too about, you know, like my experience growing up is, is, my dad worked his ass off. My mom worked her ass off, but they still enjoyed that current moment. You know what I mean? Like mm. they weren't too into the future in their heads where I think a lot of people nowadays are so in like, like I want this. They have an idea of what that dream is, right? Yeah. That they don't savor the now where it's like, it's important. You know what I mean? Like for me, it's always like this is it's important to have that, trajectory like where you want to shoot to you know you want to aim for the stars aim for the stars but don't lose sight of what you got now because 
what you got now is the reality. You know what I mean? It's, that's what you, that's what the real world right now. That is definitely something that I have struggled with at different times mm-hmm. throughout my life yeah. in, in different times. And sometimes I've done better at it and sometimes I have not, but yeah. always because for, you know, especially the last, you know, over there have been years over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, especially that I've, been so focused on trying to do this or do that, that I have, I found myself realizing, you know, waking up, not, not waking up, but like realizing, holy shit, six months just went past and I haven't done a goddamn thing. That's like anything outside of, of being focused on this. Yeah. Career shit. You know, you have to like, you, you do have to, and even if it's just slowing that down so that while you're even doing that, you're taking the time to appreciate that. Yeah. You know, that's like probably the first step because yeah. it's hard to like just pull yourself out of out of that, but slowly like you can kind of work in and you know, again, you talk about we've talked about before putting in some structure so you got some discipline yeah. and set aside some time for yourself and especially now during COVID when it's real easy, especially if you're working from home to just get up, roll out of bed, start working. And Stank like the breath, next thing you know, yeah, yet, yeah, the next thing you know, it's eight o'clock at night and you haven't done, done anything shit. else yeah. and made any time for yourself. And you get up the next day and start over again. Now, that's a vicious cycle that'll work on your psyche for yeah. sure. And it's like, to me, it's, it's always important to, cause there was a time like after I, I moved to the Midwest, things didn't go as planned in Crystal Lake, Illinois. And then I moved to the city of Chicago, right? There's a time there I was super fucking depressed because I was like, damn, man, I I put all my energy into this and it didn't work out. Right. Yeah. And I had to build up again. And I was, I was like staying in bed, you know what I mean? Not getting out of bed and being like a depressed fuck. Right. So how did I pull myself out of that was like, I literally just started with walking through the city. Yeah. And finding shit to appreciate like yeah man like it's a fucking nice day outside let's start with that it's a like you know what i mean like these these people said hi to me what that's that's cool let me take some of their good energy and now i like that depressed time in chicago i would never trade it for anything in the world because it's helped my the way i think view things like people my students and and my my girl too she's like how are you so like happy go lucky all this time. It's because I remember the fucking bad times. And I also know this is... If it's all good times, do you really know what the good times are? Exactly. So it's like, I remember dead of winter, I couldn't afford to pay the gas bill. So dead of winter in Chicago, right? Negative 20 degrees. They shut the gas off. So I, I, the way I heated my apartment was space heaters. Okay. Yeah, with yeah. with electricity, right? But that's going to be I've, a cold ass shower. I've done that so, shit. Yeah, I've done the you space heaters. Yeah. With no, yeah. So I, I hooked up two space heaters because I paid the electricity bill. <laughs> but I would come home after practice. Fastest showers ever. Fastest showers, <laughs> cold showers. So it's like every time I take a hot shower now, I feel like I'm like I'm grateful, man. Like, and it's also like this, man. Tom- tomorrow's not promised to us. Right. So it's like, I would like to like have a thought that, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all this work and I'll die an old happy man, but that's not promised to me. Yeah. So I got to take it where I, I can get it. And it's like, I'm going to enjoy the fucking day. I'm going to stop and smell the flowers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to me, that has been this past year, finding something to be grateful for, that's been the biggest obstacle. Yeah. When everything's taken yeah. away from you, what are you grateful for? Well, what am I grateful for? My family, they're they're he- as healthy as they can be right now. So they're healthy. My friends are good. Everyone's healthy and good. That's You got to look for those things. Because if all you see, if, if all you choose to see is the negative shit, God damn, it's going to be a bad fucking experience. For sure. You know, yeah. like you'll feel like the world is ending. That's that's kind of circling back a little bit to when I when I mentioned earlier about, you know, struggle, you know, making that transition from like learning to appreciate the moment. Yeah. 
you know, one of the things I think I've done a better job of as I've gotten older is appreciating the little things. Yeah. There's something, again, it's crazy. This is something my, my dad, you know, appreciate the little things. Yeah. And I, when I was young, I was like, nah, I want everything to be exciting. And that's yeah. what I want to be excited about is exciting things and yeah. all this kind of stuff. But as I've gotten older, like you do learn to appreciate the little things. Mm -hmm. It allows you to kind of not have to disrupt everything to find peace or enjoyment or yeah. satisfaction with life or that moment you're in. Mm -hmm. And I think it also makes it easier to weather storms like this year yeah. where there's so much going on. But if you're already in the habit of finding appreciation of those little things that most other people might overlook, yeah. then even during years like this, you're gonna have those moments throughout your day when you're like, you know what? this year kind of sucks but right at this moment this is really beautiful or this yeah. is really nice or and this is whatever that, that, that gratefulness once you're grateful for things everything else is like a cherry on top of the yeah. sundae you know what i'm saying like it's good like like i'm able to go out and get whatever food i want right now there was a point in my life i couldn't do that you <laughs> yeah. know what i mean there was a point in my life where i was so fucking broke that i had to buy a cheeseburger from McDonald's, half it, I would eat one half for breakfast, the other half for dinner. And that would be my oh, whole dude, thing. Oh, dude, when I was, when I, before you knew me, when I was in college the first time, yeah. I had, I had, it was, I moved out from home home and was going to college. Yeah. And I was, it was the same time I was trying to like, dial in my diet and learn about how to diet, you know, really, really eat healthier. And like that weird, that period of time, some of the gross shit I ate <laughs> because it was like, I want to eat healthy, but I was so broke, broke yeah. that I would eat like, man, I, I would do like mix a can of tuna in with a box of mac and cheese yeah, or yeah. some oh, just like, some like tuna mac, Ew. super basic, sh yeah. you know, dirt down and dirty shit. And it really even wasn't all that healthy, but you know, then eventually you transitioned. I learned a little more and I found other better ways to eat, to eat <laughs> yeah, healthier yeah. that was uh, not so did i weird. remember i mean maybe you remember this remember when i went vegetarian for the uh a yeah year? that was weird i couldn't understand how you were trying to still train and be a vet yeah. I, I mean i i understand more about ve being vegetarian now yeah. that you can oh, but, but it's this, more difficult yeah and like this was <laughs> being a vegetarian during the early 2000s like yeah not when I there was, was eating, a lot known yeah, i was eating a lot of bullshit like oh yeah the food was not you oh didn't have God, a lot of options dude, no i was eating a lot of bullshit like mac and cheese you know what i mean like like it's not even healthy no like morning all. star products like black bean like fake shit and i'd be like this is good a you lot know? of the vegetarian stuff back then if i oh remember correctly God. it was like really weird taste taste strange yeah. and it had weird it was made out of weird shit yeah. sometimes too i mean and look i i i i, I mix it up you know i yeah. I, I eat a lot of vegetables and fruits yeah. um i limit probably carbs mm -hmm. uh you know empty carbs breads pastas i had some pasta this past week man i made some pasta it's good God damn, it was so good. <laughs> I had not had pasta in like, I bet I haven't had pasta in over a year and a half or two years. Yeah. And it was like, it was so good. And I would lucked up. I tried doing this sauce the yeah. way I'd never made it before. And it came and out like bomb. it came out really good. And yeah. I was just like, yeah. This, See, but gratefulness. This sucks. Grateful, yeah. Gratefulness. But like, but yeah, I, I kind of got off track there on my pasta, but uh <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I kind of eat in the middle, you know, like mm -hmm. I eat mainly vegetables, fruits and meat. Yeah. And but I will admit that I lean a little heav heavier With meat, meat, maybe. Yeah. Not not a tremendous amount, but there's definitely and I've done tofu and, you know, you can cook it and it's there's certain ways you can cook it and it's not weird yeah. consistently consistency wise. But there's just something about animal protein yeah like especially if i'm training hard like there's something about it. there's so much more sustenance mm -hmm. in like 
I feel like there's more vitamins or something. Like I feel more Iron energized shit, when yeah. you when I have that. And it doesn't have to be red meat. No, you know, it could be fish, chicken, whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, yeah. it, but yeah, I, I I can't knock. I know people you know that that are trained hard and are super successful and that are vegan only. Yeah. yeah, but. I just well, still you know, think we, that you get an advantage if you're. Yeah, if I mean that shit don't work for me of. though. You know, I need meat. I, I for me, yeah, I agree. That's why I think it's a balance because yeah. I do think you need some roughage. Although, this whole meat thing right now is is yeah. I, I don't know. It makes me wonder if you couldn't just eat meat, but yeah. I still do feel better if I eat some vegetables. Of course, honestly, yeah. you know, it was I funny. Is, well, I remember distinctly the day that I broke being a vegetarian in Florida because I was like, "What'd you eat?" <laughs> so, right, you know, broke college students. I was still a vegetarian, but I was eating like cheap vegetarian. Did you go right? to Dockside? No. Gators. So, so my my aunt that lived in Jacksonville over there, right? Her and my uncle were coming to visit me in Orlando, right? Yeah. And they're like, "We're going to treat you to dinner." And then I was like, "Where Where do you guys want to eat dinner?" And they're like. Meet us at the Kobe Steakhouse. Oh shit! Off of I four, you know what yeah. I mean on, on I drive, <laughs> on International Drive. So then I go. It's a good first meal. Good first. So I go and I'm like being a broke college student and then having some Kobe beef. I'll go and then they're just like get whatever you want. I was like, fucking Kobe beef, some shrimp and wrapped in bacon all type all shit, all the fried meat rice <laughs> that you and have. Then, <laughs> Dude, it was so fucking delicious, and it didn't fuck with my stomach. Yeah, no. It was like, the, and I remember I was like, I'm never going to be a vegetarian again after that point. Yeah, no. But yeah, that was so good. Uh, yeah, I can't quite do it. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a meat eater. Yeah. You know, I think it's also one of the things, you know, I wonder if, if we had not started eating meat, if we had constantly been a species that had only eaten vegetables and berries and fruit, yeah. would we have developed the type of mental brain capacity that we have? Or would we, you know, cause there's more protein in meat straight up. Course, yeah. Like there just is. And you need the proteins to build the cells and yeah. evolve. And but also like uh, being a vegan is v a, a very privileged diet too. It's <laughs> is it? Yeah. Today. Yeah. I mean, you could be you could go to the store and just eat uh, beans and soy and rice and vegetables and fruit and not eat meat. You could just shop that way. Yeah, but it's, there's enough recipes out there. That she gets expensive like like for 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 broke motherfuckers not or for really. Uh, yeah. No. Like do you th here's the thing. Like yes, if you go buy the vegan prepackaged shit, mm -hmm. yes, it's more expensive. Well, also like this, in any, like, but let's, if let's, you just go buy the basic kind of foods, I guess that's how I normally shop is like the basic kind of foods. So like you go buy the vegetables from the produce section yeah. and but you're you go talking buy exclusively the beans. Uh, uh, being here in America, right? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, say okay. a third world country. Well, you gonna you know what I'm saying? Like you're not concerned being with vegan, being a vegan if you're in a third world country, bro. Because you, it's you exclusively should be worried about being surviving. A vegan is a rich people diet, bro. <laughs> or if it's or if you're in a poor a third world country that doesn't have accessibility to meat. Like you know how in sometimes um in different parts of the world in really poor places you'll see them with the the goiters that mm -hmm. they get in their necks, these big bulges. Yeah. That's because they eat too too much of us of of uh, plants, right. and the plants release a certain a certain thing that the thyroid doesn't process properly, That's and it causes the goiter shit. because yeah. they don't have access to meat. Yeah, and so it really kind of depends on your circumstances, I think. Yeah, but also it's like meat in these third world countries is a valuable sort. Like you oh, know, hundred percent. I mean? like, people be like, oh shit, the whole pig for the village or like you know what yeah. i mean like it's a thing and people won't be like do you have any tempeh instead get the fuck out of here you know what i mean like <laughs> you got any celery over there yeah you Car know like, carrots I, and celery that's one thing i always ask these vegan but i like carrots and celery too yeah but i always ask these vegan people i'm like all right let's say i bring you to travel around the world right and we go to a a, a tribal place and like they kill an animal for yeah. you it's part of their it's part of the ritual. 
will you eat the meat? Well, this is where I, I, you know I think I mean? being, being, you know, open to, and not limiting yourself to a specific diet. Although I try to have, you know, a certain structure to my diet. Like when you travel, like you got to be willing to do Eat just whatever. try whatever yeah, that culture is about that when you travel? is about that culture. Yeah. I mean, I still try, try not to go crazy with like fried foods and shit mm -hmm. because like if I don't normally eat that and then I go eating that on the road, like that makes traveling really uncomfortable. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, fuck you up. But like, you know, if you're out and you know they've got an animal or somebody offers you some, you know, yeah. some some weird cultural food, or they food, offer like, you what they got, you're going to you better eat that shit. Absolutely, you know what I mean? Like, there might be some things I wouldn't try. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure exactly what they might be because, like, I have eaten some kind of bugs, different kinds of bugs. And I remember watching things like this before Bourdain, but, like an interview with Bourdain. And he was just like, I eat whatever they give me. He's like, yeah, even he's like, even if it fuck, he's like, even if it fucks me up. Yeah. He's, he was like to be disrespectful. Yeah, he's like, you don't disrespect. They're giving you what they got. Is the part of their thing, you know. So it's like, I kind of me having a lot of admiration for, um, for Anthony Bourdain. Like it kind of like yeah, you know, like I, I'll move or I'll travel to wherever and still eat whatever these people eat. You know, like I never. A big, a big turnoff for me was always like if I heard someone, if I was like getting people to be like, let's go eat Thai food or Japanese food or some sort of ethnic food, and then some someone was like, I'm not that adventurous, <laughs> you know what I mean? What the fuck does that mean? But you know what I mean? Like that's that whack like white shit, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Oh, I'm so, not that adventurous. So, so, so that's interesting you say that because like <laughs> well, growing up. I knew a lot of people it's that okay. really wouldn't eat anything except like cow, chicken, potatoes. And biscuits. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, I had a cousin, Timmy. <laughs> I probably shouldn't call him out, but Tim, <laughs> Timmy, cousin Timmy. He, uh, man, for the longest time, he, he was a, he helped me like, he used to, he taught me a lot about playing ball too. So like, but anyway, um, he, uh, I remember when he was younger, like he literally wouldn't eat anything except hamburgers. <laughs> oh, hamburger. Like Timmy. that was it. He had a hand, he ate hamburgers for lunch and he ate hamburgers for dinner. Jesus. Like, and yeah, that's all he would really eat. Didn't yeah. matter what you were fixing. You had to fix him hamburgers. Mm. And then, like, eventually he grew out of it, you know, but, like, he, he, was a, he was a young, <laughs> he was a, he was an adult, I mean, before he broke out of this. Yeah. He was in his probably third, I don't know, late 20s, early 30s, or yeah. I, I don't really know, but, I, you I, know, there's people that get, they don't like to try stuff, they don't like to be adventurous. But that's what I fucking don't like, is it's like, if anyone else You goes, might be missing out on something that's awesome, though. Yeah, but it's also like, let's say... They they have some out of t out of towners come to their town and they offer up what they got and the out of towners like I don't want to eat your shit, they'd be offended right. So I was like I don't want to eat your hamburgers. I'm, yeah. I don't like you guys probably don't cook it right you know yeah. like you guys don't know what you're doing, like you know what I mean like there's there when someone says I'm not that adventurous there's 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 a racial uh, there's something there's something behind that you know what I mean yeah it's fear. It's fear, yeah. It's fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. But Some what's known right now is I got to take a piss, so <laughs> entertain them really quick. So we'll cut real real quick to uh, some cannabis news. So earlier this week, um, you know, there was, uh, I saw where another example of an interesting uh company that has been around since the medical days. In fact, uh, it was one of the really big companies um, when, you know, before adult use was was made available um, here on the West Coast. Um, Cushy Punch, um, for those of you out there who, who are familiar, you're going to know that name. Um, been around for, for a long time, but they're actually being sued by the state of California now for the manufacturing and distribution of more than $64 million worth of THC gummies with um, many of those gummies having twice the legal limits uh, of what's allowed. So 
I mean, getting sued by the state of California for illegal manufacturing distribution of $64 million worth of, of illegal product um, is not a good situation for such a company that's been, you know, kind of an, an uh, I would say one of the OG companies of the industry. And, and I think it's, it's probably, you know, 64 million is it could sink would very well may sink a company especially and it comes down to leadership again like we talk about here a lot when you consider that in order to have if they had just kept these under the legal limit on the dosages uh, technically um, if they had gotten the proper licensing for to to manufacture and distribute these products um, the licensing would have only cost them $75,000, which I know that's still a lot, but when you compare it that they're going to get sued for $64 million, $75,000 seems like a no-brainer to go get the licenses and do it properly. Uh, just doesn't make sense. It's another example of these older companies that have been around from the medical days really having having problems trying to figure out how to navigate the legal cannabis, uh, uh, you know, industry and all the regulations that come with it. Um, it's, I tell people all the time, it's not an industry where you're, they're just sitting around rolling joints in the back of the shop anymore. It's a real business and you've got to treat it like a real business. Um, on a more positive note, um, the state of Vermont uh, legalized cannabis uh, recently. So that's uh, a positive. Yay. Yeah, some some more weed on. Although Vermont was, I, I, I've been anticipating that. It's just the right culture for cannabis up there. Bunch, yeah, ben and Jerry's up yeah, there. You know, yeah. Bernie. Bernie. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's Are the, any southern states Going to fucking legalize cannabis? Uh, what is the problem? I mean, people with keep, all those so there's a bunch that have it medically available, CBD, or they have some version of cannabis me medically available, but mm. most of them are not there. People keep people keep getting excited. Like people jump the gun, they get excited when there's a talk of something, but like I don't think there's anything really on the yeah. horizon right so now. So if you had to choose uh, a southern state. That would be the first to legalize cannabis. Which one would it be? Tennessee? No. North Carolina. Do you consider Virginia a southern state? Yeah, you'd have to, yeah. I think Virginia maybe. Because DC it's all it's medically legal in DC, right? It is. Yeah. 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 And, and it's medically available throughout the state in Virginia. I mean, here's a fact. I know a lot of good old boys that smoke weed, which though. Puts it, which, <laughs> which puts it ahead of states like Tennessee, who yeah. only have CBD through hemp uh, available right. in it. So Virginia is already ahead in that game. And I think the influence from D.C. Um, and Northern Virginia, yeah, who are the money makers. Well, really, it all comes out of D.C. D.C. effects is what makes Northern Virginia different from the yeah. rest of the state. So it, I mean, that's where they get all their money from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like Spain with Barcelona and the rest of the country. <laughs> yeah. you know? So if we had a rank, Virginia's number one. What's Thanks number two? I mean, Florida's the one everybody's really watching. Yeah. But it's such a clusterfuck down there with the Department of Health running the you system. You can get oxy's anywhere there. You should be able to get some, some you weed. You should. Dude. You should. You should. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it's just such a hard read to know what's going to happen there right now. There's a new lawsuit down there because of the way they did the licensing, uh, awarded the licenses, was very strict, and it really has a lot of the structure of a lot of improprieties because it basically gave the licensing to only a handful of operators throughout the whole state. Huh. Um, and so they're in the middle of lawsuits right now from other operators who tried to get licensing and we'll see how that plays out. Otherwise, I really don't know, man. I've, yeah. I've heard Mississippi being talked about recently in the news, but like, again, I'm no. not getting excited about that talk because it's Mississippi. Yeah. Like Mississippi stuck in the fifties. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Mississippi ain't gonna be the first state to legalize uh, adult use cannabis in, in the, the south. south. Yeah. It's not happening. That's It'll hilarious. be one of the last in the country, probably. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, this week while we're while we're kind of talking about uh, you know interesting uh, therapeutics, um, I saw where uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, decriminalized medicinal mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Well. Ann Arbor so. is a little hippie town, you know? Like, it is. Like, Ann Arbor is Co dope. Co college town, a lot yeah. like Berkeley. It's like the Midwest Berkeley. Yeah. Sort of. Ann Arbor's, Ann Arbor's really dope. I sort like, of. 
I like that place. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, speaking of Berkeley, UC Berkeley uh, just recently opened a center for psychedelic science and I education, saw that. Yeah, which I saw is that. like, you know, it's it's an it's it's another step in the right direction of, of kind of learning more about these substances and how they might be able to benefit people in a proper setting. Yeah, it's great. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that, you know, all, all interesting things in, indeed, you know, something, uh, else that, uh, remember when I was talking about the tarred meteor shower? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what time of year it is. We're, we're entering it right now. So just recently, <laughs> big ass meteor, like lit up the sky over Monterey, Mexico. Ah, uh, just saying. So <laughs> just saying, Oh my God! Hopefully, hopefully, no meteors hit any major on the cities. On the po <laughs> yeah, on the positive, if we have to flee the Earth, uh, we the scientific community has identified twenty four uh, extra solar planets that are inhabitable, though they're all at least a hundred light years away. Okay, I'd just, yeah, it's, if then it's like if that's the case, like I'd be the first to get hit by the meteor. So let's take me now, boom, and then I would just move no. on to whatever next level's next. I'm a survivalist till the end. I'm going to hold on for and fight. I figure my mentality really is that as long as there's breath in my lungs and a, and a, and I have a beating heart, yeah, that there's hope. I could picture you being uh, you know Matthew I mean? McConaughey from uh, Interstellar. I just, I'm, I just don't see. Uh, I just I, don't go, Murph. I can't, I can't give up. You can't, can't give up. I, like if you're gonna, if you're gonna pass on, then you're gonna pass on eventually anyway. Mm -hmm. But like, you're gonna get every last. Or fight, I'd, I'd fight be the first to die, and then they'd, they'd revive me, three hundred years in the future. I mean, I'd be like, what, what happened? Where am I? You just know? cryo freeze me and shoot me to one of these planets. Like, like Fry from Futurama. <laughs> You'd be Fry from Futurama, yeah. man. Oh, man. Not, <laughs> he had an interesting life after he dethawed. He found love. <laughs> there you go. He found love, dude. <laughs> With a Cyclops With a lady. one-eyed woman. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. But what, what do you got going on this week? Uh, what do I have going on this week? I don't know. More work. Yeah. I'm going to, I think maybe next weekend or something, I'm going to try to get out, out of town again for like a day or two. Me too. Because it's like, that's like the last weekend of, of uh, our sunlight. You know what I mean? That's exactly what I was looking at. I'm looking at, uh, I was looking the other day at uh, trying to get in another hike. Here. Where are you going to go? So I was looking at... You need to get out of town, like I said, though. Yeah, so... Well, that's kind of getting out of town, sort of. Go to go to the fucking Grand Canyon or something. But it's... Well, I don't have enough time. Like, I'd have to take a day off I to guess do what? that. You got food poisoning, like I said. Yeah. Matt got food poisoning. Yeah, well, I'm looking in. for something a little closer. So <laughs> I was looking at... Uh, I think it's M Mount uh, Jacinto that's over by Idlewild. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. but... I'm a little like conflicted because it's uh, so when I did the other one, I think it was around 11 and a half miles. Yeah. And it took me, what, seven hours? Yeah. And so this one is 18 miles. And so I'm thinking, like, could I really do that in a day? I think it could be they they estimate eight hours to do it in, so maybe it's not as steep as as, as but still, Baldi. That's, so that's maybe, a long haul, though. But, dude. but I'm like, if I do that, that's not going to give much time to like appreciate yeah. the time there, which is like, really part of why I want to do it. It's not just about pushing myself to the limits; it's to appreciate the environment and, yeah. and the energy out there, and so. I'm strongly considering uh, uh, maybe camping it and, and, and taking the full pack and, and Why staying don't you overnight. Why do go to um, just do, it, just do an overnight? Or you could do Hicksville Pines, the bud, and, the bud and breakfast over there. Yeah, but then I won't, still won't get to the top. That's yeah. I want, the point is to get to the top of the mountain. Yeah, or just drive up it, you know. <laughs> there's no road. Damn it, there's, there's no, no road. Mountain bike up there? No, I, that I don't want to go to the top of a mountain that uh, <laughs> you can drive to the top of. That's not an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there's a. I mean, 
That's cool. Like, but then I saw this crazy ass video. Did you see this video online about the, the cougar? fucking cougar stalking that dude in for Utah. six minutes? Yeah, in Utah. I don't give a shit. I know those those cats. There's big cats out here too. Like, of course, and you there's know, more big cats out here. I that think. shit, like, that's something I do think about when I go on these runs as well. Not just hikes, but these runs. Like, you know, you yeah. kind of go out into nature. And I mean, do you remember when you were planning on? Uh, Doing your trek from doing fucking the sixty miler. Yeah, you're you're yeah. you're like drop me off. Yeah, and I was like, the only way I would drop you off is if you had some bear. Remember this? I was like, if you had some bear spray and a yeah. weapon, bro. But you know what? He fucked around with that cat for five minutes and forty some seconds or so, and then he finally picks up a fucking rock oh, and why he threw he do it that at in the it. First place. That's exactly. I mean, I've been around coyotes and. I think uh, maybe some a wolf and like I've seen some some predatory animals when I was younger in mm -hmm. the mountains. Anytime you throw something at them, in my experience, they've kind of ran. Yeah, they kind of bolt. But it's like I was watching the whole thing. I was like, this motherfucker doesn't. He he's also on a path kept his fucking rocks. camera up the whole time, walking backwards, and I'm like. If this motherfucker he does it for trips the gram, bro. and he falls backwards, <laughs> yeah. as soon as he starts to lean back, that cat is going to pounce and he's a dead dude. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. But that's why I would have a fucking knife. Well, that's why I and always... some bear spray. I, well, I don't run with bear spray because I don't normally run in bear territory. Yeah. But I do run with a knife in my... on me. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I, I do, do run with a knife. Like you might, it, you know, if I in, encounter a big cat, it might get a bite in and it might claw me. Yeah. It, I'm not saying I'm going to get away unscathed, yeah. but I do feel confident I would kill it before it would kill me. I want to set up this match. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to do this, but you know, I'm just saying. I want to set up this match, but you won't find me anywhere out there. <laughs> I mean, the benefits are and the in are far outweigh the the risk. I think. Right. I don't know. It's Besides, in, uh, what a fucking manly way to die if you were gonna die. Fucking battling a. I mean, probably a terrible way to die, but. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty pretty you raw. Die, then you, then before you're like, like that motherfucker. Like you killed, you killed you killed the cougar. The cougar like yeah, they, killed you, and then yeah, and then like both bodies laying there. No, like, they'd be like, and then uh, and then a bear found both of them and ate them, ate both. them from his asshole in. Uh, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd already, I don't want to die that I'd way. I'd already be dead. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that that would matter that much. Oh man, but I mean, I'm trying maybe try to go to Palm Springs or something. I don't know, like something close. Palm Springs. You know, I got a buddy that run. I think works out in the casinos out you there. You told me, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't gamble though, do you really? No. no. Like that's even like you when we went to Vegas, you know, like me I we really, it's not I don't gamble. Yeah. I still like being in a casino. Yeah. I just don't really gamble. No, I don't like so losing like, money. I always like go to the roulette table and for just real? like drink for free and like make minimum bets. Yeah. And like I don't know, for some reason I always break about even on roulette. Right. So I'm like, you know, if I drink free, I in, I'm I'm having a good time. Like, yeah. I'm fine with that. For me, gambling's like, a it's like I get bored. I have ADD, right? So yeah. it's like to sit at the table, I get yeah. bored so fucking easy. And then I'm like, I don't like losing money either. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> so my my favorite days of gambling are like, uh, is like playing 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 poker with friends. Yeah. Like drinking while you're doing it, and just all sitting around yeah. casually and not giving a shit at somebody's house. Like that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I will say this. I that's think just not real serious. Yeah. Like, I don't like being all serious about it because, like, I'm not a fucking expert. But it's also always it. funny when you talk to people who are like, like, I win all the time. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't, dude. I know some people that have won quite a bit of money gambling, though, yeah. from, from time from to time. From poker? Yeah. Yeah. This girl I work with, like, I think she won, like, 50, 50K. Really? Like, I think she's a little bit of a of a... Of a Card card hustler. I think Either she. I think she knows what's. I think she knows how to play. Either she strikes me as somebody that would know how to play, though. Okay. So I. I like actually believe. Rather believe be that, this. or she. Only, she. She has an OnlyFans account. <laughs> what's an OnlyFans? You don't know OnlyFans, bro. I've heard this, but what is it's it? It's all. It's like uh, what all these Instagram girls use to make money to like you know like. Oh, they do porn on yeah, there basically. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, who was it? I heard just heard somebody was on that uh, that used to be famous. They're all on it, dude. Are they? All, all yeah, everyone's all the on used it. to pseudo famous people. Yep, they're all on it. Well, <laughs> as long as only the fans get to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. Well, this has been uh, episode twenty yes. of the Evolved Idiots podcast. This is uh, shit. You know, we have two more of these before the election. <laughs> Right? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully yeah. we'll still be up and running. <laughs> hopefully the world doesn't come burn down. I hope not. It'll be an exciting two weeks. There should be lots to... Unpack. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unpack. There'll be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we will see you next week for episode 21. Yep. Catch you next week. <laughs> See you guys next week. Peace, love. Peace.